Today we're going to talk about a condition that many people may not have heard about, but right. it's certainly a condition that affects um, an estimated 5% of the population. I was surprised by that. I, I had no I idea well. that the uh, numbers were that high. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The condition is called hyperhidrosis, and the reason we're talking about it is that it's because you know every month is a month for something, right. and, and mm -hmm. November happens to be um, Hyperhidrosis Awareness Month mm -hmm. uh, from the International Hyperhidrosis Society. And just while we're on the topic, November is also Pancreatic Cancer Month yes. for another... Um, and, and Men's Health Awareness Month is it in general. Yeah. Men's Health Awareness. That's what uh, uh, November is all okay. about. Is oh, that's stash. right. No Shave November. Yeah. Um, and it's all about bringing awareness to men's health related right. issues. I always forget about that. It's No Shave November, which is uh, men's health issues, yeah. a reminder. Um, that's right. So people may start growing beards in November or stop yeah. shaving in November. Yeah. Um, but we're going to talk about hyperhidrosis. This Hi is Hyperhidrosis Month. And uh, as you said, um, it's little known. Mm -hmm. And even people who have the condition don't, sadly, mm -hmm. don't realize it. And um, they can struggle for years right. um, uh, until they get a treatment. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, it's not it's not an easy topic to talk about, right. um, except yeah. with your doctor. Absolutely. Uh, but it's not something you talk about with with other people. Right. Mm -hmm. Hyperhidrosis is a condition characterized by excessive sweating. Right. All right. right. And now, certainly, it, just in in talking about it in that way. You know, I'm sure that there are people who, who would listen to that and, mm -hmm. and kind of, you know, what do you mean, excessive right. sweating, you know, everybody sweats. Um, so what we're going to do today, we're going to talk about what sweating is all about, what sweating, but we're going we're gonna to talk about some of the, you know, um, the, the outcomes, some of the consequences right. of, of a condition such as hyperhidrosis from that psychological perspective right. um, and talk about some treatment. Right. But let's talk about sweating for a minute. Yeah. Interesting. Um, Phenomenon, you know, it's something everybody does, right? It as all of you know sweating is our body's way of cooling itself, right? It does that in two ways one is it just releases this warm water that's mm -hmm. inside of you um, And second when the water when that sweat gets to the surface of your skin um, It evaporates mm -hmm. and when something evaporates it cools. That's what air conditioners do, right? They evaporate the water mm -hmm. uh, the condenser mm -hmm. uh, the condenser is bad um, that's what does the evaporating. So right. you take the moisture out. So your body gets rid of um, moisture mm -hmm. um, through sweat. There's also a, um, a change in blood vessels mm -hmm. and they dilate so right. that so the blood can get out to the extremities. Mm -hmm. you, want to, you want to get all the stuff away from your brain right. is what you're doing. Um, but the body has uh, two kinds of sweat glands. Right. We've mm -hmm. learned eccrine, E-C-C-R-I-N-E, and apocrine. Okay, so it's two kinds of sweat glands. And the second type, apocrine, is uh, emotional mm -hmm. sweat, right. if you will. Okay, and as it turns out, that has a different odor. Um, eccrine sweat is the exercise sweat. Right. Okay, and it typically occurs um, in your face, in your forehead, mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. um, on your armpits and different parts of your body. Um, but those, gland those eccrine glands um, sort of are localized in different mm -hmm. parts of our body, right. you know, the palms of your hands and the soles of your feet, mm -hmm. um, under your armpits and, um, and your forehead. So, so when you're exercising, that's typically the way you get rid of it. So you mm -hmm. get sweaty feet, sweaty palms, and it just right. comes dripping out of your body. Your body's covered with these, but they're localized in those areas. Mm -hmm. The apocrine glands are mostly in your groin and your armpits, mm -hmm. okay, and those, and, and under your breasts. Um, and so those are places that sweat, but that's more emotional sweat. Right. So you have exercise sweat and emotional sweat right. are the different type of glands. You have about four million of these yeah. scattered around your body. Um, and they're activated by your nervous system. Mm -hmm. You know, as soon as your body starts to get too hot, mm -hmm. your nerve, your brain says, set in motion the air right. conditioner. Turn on the right. air conditioner. And that's when you begin to sweat because right. it's your body's way of releasing that heat. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so while some of those glands are um, in greater concentration in certain regions of your body, as you said, th they mm -hmm. are located everywhere. And so, mm -hmm. you know, you when you are exercising, you, you don't just sweat in the palms of your hands and the soles of your right. feet and armpits and everything. You sweat everywhere, right. but you have a greater concentration in some of those locations. Right. And the other interesting thing is when we talk about 
body odor. Mm -hmm. It's the apocrine glands right. that create body odor. The the sweat typically from um, athletic right. um, doesn't have the same odor. Mm -hmm. The reason sweat has odor is it's mostly water, mm -hmm. but it picks up salts and proteins right. and urea and ammonia and other substances as it's excreted. Right. It picks up these other things, and it's the other things that smell. Right. Well, and, and you know, what, what's fascinating is when you have a cold or when you have the flu or when you mm -hmm. have some of these things, you know, when you, when you think of your body having a, a, a virus, for example, right. mm -hmm. you know, there's only a few ways to you know, if you want to think about it in these sort of rudimentary ways, there's only a, a, a number, of, a few ways that your body can get rid of those things. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we have the, we go to the bathroom and we, we can excrete right. um, some of the, the waste that way. Mm -hmm. Sweat is another way. Um, and that's one of the reasons why we s even sweat when we're sick. Right. You know, when we're, when we're um, coming down, uh, yeah. coming down with a, from a fever, you know, we will we'll sweat, sweat. Mm -hmm. and, and we're working to sweat it out. And so many times, exercising, um, sweating, As it, when you're not feeling, you know, when you're sort of in those mm -hmm. early stages mm -hmm. of a cold or even the flu, um, sometimes exercising can help you recover faster because right. you're That's sweating right. a lot of those, mm -hmm. lot of that stuff out. Get rid of it. And we've mm -hmm. had that experience. Um, these, these sweat glands, by the way, the, your entire body is covered. The only part of your body that doesn't have sweat glands are your lips, as it turns out. Um, and we we all sweat all day. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody's always sweating, even if you're not aware of it. Right. You're losing water, and you you sweat about an ounce and a half, which mm -hmm. is a, a and little about a shot glass. If you mm -hmm. drink, it's about one or two right. ounces. Um, so if you think of a tablespoon or mm -hmm. almost two tablespoons. Yeah. Um, of sweat per day that most of us just get rid of. Right. Yeah. And that's not when you're not exercising, just... Yeah, just normal, normal sweating. excretion, right? Mm -hmm. And so the other thing about sweating is that it's, number one, it's necessary, mm -hmm. okay, to, for survival. Right. It's part, it's how we regulate our body temperature because mm -hmm. if your body gets too hot, you right. could have problems. You could have heat stroke, mm -hmm. okay? The other interesting thing about sweating is, is that it had an adaptive advantage. Yeah. And yeah. that was fascinating. Yeah. Because most animals, if, if you're a dog lover, dogs pant, mm -hmm. uh, cats pant, you mm -hmm. know, most mammals pant. The adaptive advantage of sweating is when we were chasing, thousands of years ago, when uh, we had yeah, to chase animals yeah. mm -hmm. for food, the animal eventually had to stop to pant. Mm -hmm. We didn't have to. Right. So even though it ran faster, we could run longer, right? And eventually, we could catch up to it because right. it had to stop to pant, right? To sweat, right. To, to release that heat. We could sweat through our skin. We didn't have to stop to pant. Mm -hmm. We could keep running, right? And eventually, we caught it and right. ate it, right? And, and and one of the the other side to that um, adaptation is that you know when we are when we are being chased, right? You know we sweat. We sweat. It is. It's more. We become um, slick. Slippery. It's much more difficult for right. for to be held onto, right. and so we're better able to get away because there's not um, because we become slippery right. and 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 light. So it's very adaptive. There are some. Ad there are adaptive advantages mm -hmm. to sweating. Right. However, as with most things in our body, um, the system can go awry right. for some reason. Yeah. Okay. And and with hyperhidrosis. Um, incidentally, hyperhidrosis is only one one of the conditions right. that um, are related to excess sweating. Okay, but um, hyperhidrosis is excessive sweating. Right. Okay, and um, as we said, it, it affects about um, uh, five percent five percent of the population. But people with hyperhidrosis have about they sweat about four times as much. Right, um, mm -hmm. and so you can. In, if you if you are a person who sweats normally, um, imagine four times that that right. you have to deal with four times that, and it's mostly affecting your palms, and your armpits, and the okay, soles of your, yeah. and the soles of your feet. So you have foot odor is becomes mm -hmm. a problem because you're excess sweating and it's caught in, in shoes, particularly mm -hmm. uh, sneakers and things. Um, <clears throat> but also you have excess sweating in your armpits, and uh, in the palms of your hands. And a bit four times as much, right. so it is a significant difference, right. and and it creates um, serious emotional 
and social problems right. for people who have excess sweating. Right. Yeah, so th there are two types <coughs> of hyperhidrosis. There's the uh, primary Perfect. focal uh, mm -hmm. hyperhidrosis, and then there's the um, secondary global uh, mm -hmm. hyperhidrosis. Right. Now, the secondary global hyperhidrosis is um, excessive sweating caused by um, a, some, some other, other medical mm -hmm. uh, related issue or the mm -hmm. side effect of a medication or mm -hmm. something like that. Right. So when we're thinking about um, <coughs> you know, authentic hyperhidrosis or the, the condition, mm -hmm. we're thinking about primary uh, focal, and, and that is where you have that excessive sweating issue, but it's not because of another medical condition. It's not right. because of medications you're taking or anything like that. It's just because your body's nervous system mm -hmm. um, keeps producing. It right. doesn't shut down. Right. It's supposed to do this, mm -hmm. but it does it right. to excess. Okay. Right. So that's the primary type. Right. right. Yeah. And, and that's and so that's when we're thinking about, you know, as we move into treatment and, and when to uh, seek support and everything, we're, we're going to be primarily talking about primary uh, right. because, you know, if it's due to another medical condition, you need to get that other medical condition treated. If it's right. because of a side effect of a medication, you need to deal with uh, that medication. Mm -hmm. uh, so when it's not caused by something else, mm -hmm. we need to um, have that treated. Right. Um, if you suffer from hyperhidrosis, if you find yourself with excess sweating, you're, it's important that you schedule an appointment with a dermatologist. Mm -hmm. That's uh, right. Because a dermatologist is the primary um, uh, physician specialty that will treat that. Right. The condition itself is, um, I guess we could talk about acetylcholine, right? We've talked sure. about it before. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, an, it's an acetylcholine mm -hmm. issue, okay? Um, but um, the problem with hyperhidrosis is that people struggle for years. Mm -hmm. um, it's something that we don't know that it, it seems to run in families. There seems to be a heritability component. So sure. children have this from birth on. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's a condition that uh, they struggle with in elementary school and mm -hmm. middle school. And they don't understand it. They right. think, well, I, I'm different. I have this condition. I don't. It's embarrassing because in our culture, you don't want to see right. sweaty armpits. In, right. You don't want to see wet sweat in your clothes. And you also, because we hold hands and shake hands, mm -hmm. we don't want, we don't, ex these people who have hyperhidrosis, right. especially kids, become acutely aware right. that, that it's gross right. because they've been told, mm -hmm. ooh, you're gross, your hands are all sweaty. Mm -hmm. So they stop shaking hands, they stop mm -hmm. holding hands, right. um, and they become acutely aware mm -hmm. of the um, social implications, right. the, the um, negative social uh, uh, implications of having sweaty palms and smelly feet and armpits and it gets in your clothes. As a result, they become um, socially withdrawn, mm -hmm. and it determines their wardrobe. Right. Um, I had a young woman who uh, has hyperhidrosis, and she will come in and say, I didn't wear these colors my entire right. life. And she said, if I was part of an athletic team, I would always dread. I would, I would be so appreciative if it was black, mm -hmm. because I didn't have to worry about it. But if it was gray mm -hmm. or a light blue, she said it, it became almost impossible for mm -hmm. me to participate because I would be drenched, you know, my armpits would be soaked and the other, my teammates would, wouldn't right. have nothing. And so it was like, it, it became, um, uh, a critical part, a daily, something that they did day after day after day. They lived with this condition daily. And it really became an emotional uh, problem yeah. uh, the, and the social withdrawal. I had a young man who had it. Um, he was probably, his was a little bit more severe. And he was a, um, when he would go to school, he would wear two t-shirts. He lives in the South. Mm -hmm. But he would wear two T-shirts that would absorb some of the sweat because right. it would come, it, was, it was his entire body, and um, and if he began to sweat in class, he would have to get up and leave. Mm -hmm. So it affected his academic performance sure. because he would he would get to class and if he was sweating, you know, if he happened to be late, a little bit nervous, excess sweating, uh, he wouldn't go to, he wouldn't go to class. Mm -hmm. So he he would be missing classes because right. of the sweating. So it has. 
um, Im significant implications for people's social life, their educational experiences, their work experiences. Imagine if you have hyperhidrosis and you get nervous before a speech. Mm -hmm. You know, there you stand, you're drenched, you know, your clothes are soaked and right. it's a huge problem. Right. So, so is it, it is important to seek help. Um, you know, the excessive sweating, it can cause uh, different infections. Um, it That's causes social emotional uh, right. difficulties. Mm -hmm. um, so th there are some complications that, wa you know, warrant seeking a, uh, support from a professional. Right. I forgot about the infections. Right. People who sweat excessively are prone to skin infections. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. So it's social and emotional implications, but also some uh, medical right. problems, uh, right. including skin infections. Right. So when do you see a doctor? Uh, there's really four times. If, if you think you have excess sweating, um, if it's disrupting your life, right. which it did in the case of these two youngsters that I mm -hmm. dealt with, teenagers that I dealt with, if it causes you distress, okay, um, if, you, if you're so concerned about it that you have emotional turmoil, then that's another mm -hmm. reason. Um, if you have a sudden onset mm -hmm. of sweating, because if it suddenly appears out of nowhere, it could be related to some other medical problem right. that you should get treated. Right. And then the last is if you have night sweats for no reason. Right. We, uh, we often sometimes have night sweats related to mm -hmm. colds and fevers. Um, but if you have night sweats and there's no explanation for right. it. So there are, uh, there are four good reasons for you to seek medical um, advice uh, if you have excess sweating. Right. Mm -hmm. um, treatment. Um, if you go to a dermatologist and they, they say, yes, this is what you have, we need to do treatment. Um, there are a couple of treatments to help with that. Um, right. Certainly medications. Mm -hmm. um, there are medications that, that can help decrease some of that. Right. Um, there are more um, intrusive treatments like Botox uh, treatment and uh, there's even, there are even laser uh, treatments yeah. to help mm -hmm. um, basically um, damage or, or um, turn off some of the sweat glands. Uh, there's surgeries to actually remove to some remove of the sweat them. glands. Yeah, if you have too many, right? You know, or, or if they produce excessive, then you take some out. Which is, these are all really we're, intrusive. We're always advised. We're always advised to do the non-intrusive. Mm -hmm. Start with the easiest, simplest, least risk right. uh, approaches first. The the easiest is antiperspirants. Right. Okay, and you can get. You can get very strong over-the-counter mm -hmm. antiperspirants, you talk to your pharmacist, or you can get prescription mm -hmm. antiperspirants. And what antiperspirants, you know, as most of you know, there's a difference between antiperspirant and deodorant. deodorant right. okay? Deodorant makes it smell better. Right. You're, you're still going to sweat. Deodor. Yeah. Right. It smells. Antiperspirant, actually, the aluminum, and there's two mm -hmm. things we want to say about that, the aluminum uh, chloride or hydrochloride blocks it actually blocks the sweat gland right uh, from mm -hmm. from excreting the problem with aluminum has been associated with alzheimer's you know right. some dementias yeah and there's so, some concern with tell you not to use aluminum cookware and you know if you have a lifetime of um aluminum exposure antiperspirant mm -hmm. aluminum exposure could have implications later um but that's that's what does the blocking is the aluminum mm -hmm. so that's one thing you can do and, and there is some concern. I mean, you, you have to um, acknowledge the potential concern with, you know, blocking those sweat glands. I mean, you know, they're, they're still going to produce. They're supposed to do that. And, and so when you block them, it, it, you know, you, you do run the risk of, of other complications. Right. So, um, so you have over-the-counter. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and there are others, I think in the Mayo Clinic, um, article there's an article here from the mail right we, we included it in the link right and they have a list of um, interventions uh, right. treatments right. Um, for uh, excess sweating another one is um, you mentioned Botox right um, Botox um, we've been using that for uh, anti-wrinkle right uh, Right. Think, uh, women have it injected around their lips or their eyes or something, and it gets rid of. Um, right, and and some people even use it for, um, you know, for uh, it can be used for sweating. Right. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and it can be used for so it's it's actually being used for a lot of different things now. Right. Um, right. And uh, but it's pricey. It is. Right. It's, it's eight hundred dollars, just for your armpits. You mm -hmm. can have it in your palms and your soles. Right. The soles of your feet. But. Um, 
It's expensive. Right. It, the, the treatments last around six to eight months, mm-hmm. and it's $800 for two armpits, but you have, it to have, you have to have it done, and many insurance companies don't reimburse. Right. Okay. Right. So Botox is a possibility. Right. There are some creams that you can use mm-hmm. um, that help. Um, and then there are the nerve-blocking medications, right. and there's a new one on the market today. I think it's produced by a German company. It's called... Cubrexa mm-hmm. starts with a Q. If you're playing Scrabble, you don't need a U. Um, usually, you need a U if you have a Q. Right. Okay. This is Q B R E X Z A. Cubrexa, um, and what it does is it is it seems to act um, against the acetylcholine for right. some reason. Mm-hmm. Okay, so um, those are uh, some medications you can take. There are some others. But there are some medications. These are nerve blocking medications. Right. We talked about the antiperspirants and we talked about botulinum. Um, work with your dermatologist. Right. Start with the simple stuff first. Right. Um, because the more invasive procedures mm-hmm. carry greater risks. Right. So um, we would, we would, uh, this is um, Cubrexa. It's an interesting, it's a, cl- it, there, there, it comes in wipes. Mm-hmm. Okay, right. So you wipe it under your armpits, but you're instructed very carefully only do one a day. Right. You know, because if you do too many, you start what you said. You start blocking and right. you start interfering with your body's thermoregulation. Right. And you don't want to do that. So please, if you're using Cubrexa, please follow the instructions right. carefully. Right. Um, f- for those <laughs> who have hyperhidrosis and you're struggling with some of those social emotional. Uh, issues, your, the right. embarrassment or the um, anxiety, because it's it's one of those conditions that that could potentially and, and maybe mm-hmm. very likely cause some of the anxiety that you were referring to right. earlier. You know, it is good to see a, a mental health professional right. um, to develop some coping strategies. All week this week, we talked about meditation and mindfulness. Right. Um, those could are great use. ways to reduce stress, and reducing mm-hmm. stress may right. help um, reduce uh, some of the sweating, certainly. Mm-hmm but it also will help uh, better cope with some of the stress associated right. with it. The other thing is, um, if, you're, if you're just ex- um, beginning to experience the social implications, social ramifications of hyperhidrosis, it helps to see a mental health professional because you can, coping strategies, mm-hmm. okay? If you have found a successful treatment, you need to, you need to reintegrate, mm-hmm. you need to learn how to I don't know how else to put this. You need to learn how to act normally. You know, mm-hmm. you have to start shaking hands, right. something you've been avoiding all your life. You need to not worry about mm-hmm. your armpits. You need to not worry about things. And so you need to learn how to reintegrate right. um, and, and act uh, the way other people are acting. Because right. remember, you've built these habits over time mm-hmm. and you've built also a number of aversions. There are things you avoid doing right. because of excess sweating. So. Uh, work through some of that stuff so that you begin to normalize your mm-hmm. life. And um, that would also be something you could do with a mental health, like a, co- a, a coach or a mental health Absolutely. professional. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So yeah. uh, so it, it is a not uh, well-known, but mm-hmm. certainly com- uh, relatively common uh, really condition mm-hmm. that would be, uh, that does warrant treatment. It warrants a special attention right. and it, and it um, you know, it certainly has some psychological implications. Right. So, yeah. um, if you if you struggle with excess sweating, you know, we, you are, we, we really encourage you to you know talk to a dermatologist, see what's going on. If you're having some of that those psychological things, just you know, talk with a mental health professional and see mm-hmm. if you can build some of those coping strategies. Right. But remember, sweating is normal. Right. Sweating is, has many advantages, and it's absolutely essential for survival. Right. But if it's excessive and if it's starting to bother you, um, seek some professional advice. See a dermatologist, see your family doctor, Mm -hmm. get some professional advice. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right. That is it for today. Until next time, stay happy, stay healthy, and forget to be afraid. 